Imagine waking up tomorrow feeling completely different, more peaceful, more connected, and more alive than ever before. What if I told you that this isn't just a dream, but something you can actually achieve? Today, we're diving into 10 simple spiritual practices that have the power to transform your life, starting right now. These aren't complicated rituals or hard-to-learn techniques. They're straightforward actions you can take today that will spark profound changes in how you experience the world. You might be wondering, why should I care about spiritual practices? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever felt stressed out, disconnected, or like something was missing in your life? That's where these practices come in. They're like secret keys that unlock doors to inner peace, deeper connections, and a sense of purpose. In our fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in the daily grind and forget about our inner selves. But here's the thing. When we neglect our spiritual side, we're missing out on a huge part of what makes life truly fulfilling. These practices aren't about following a specific religion or belief system. They're about tapping into something bigger than ourselves, finding meaning in our everyday experiences, and becoming the best versions of ourselves. Whether you're dealing with stress at work, relationship troubles, or just feeling a bit lost, these spiritual practices can help you navigate life's challenges with more grace and resilience. And the best part? You don't need any special equipment or years of training to get started. These are things you can do right now, today, that will begin to shift your perspective and change your life in meaningful ways. So, are you ready to discover these life-changing practices? Let's dive in. Let's start with something you're already doing right now, without even thinking about it. Breathing. But here's the game changer. When you start paying attention to your breath, it becomes a powerful tool for transformation. Mindful breathing is all about focusing your attention on the simple act of inhaling and exhaling. It sounds easy, right? And it is but it's also incredibly powerful. Here's how to do it. Find a comfortable place to sit or lie down. Close your eyes if you want to or just soften your gaze. Now take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. Feel the air filling your lungs. Then slowly exhale through your mouth. Notice the sensation of the air leaving your body. Do this for a few minutes, keeping your attention on your breath. If your mind wanders, and it will, that's totally normal, just gently bring your focus back to your breathing. Now you might be thinking, how can just breathing change my life? Well, let me tell you. It's pretty amazing what this simple practice can do. When you focus on your breath, you're anchoring yourself in the present moment. All those worries about the future and regrets about the past, they fade into the background. You're training your mind to be here, now, fully present in your life. But it doesn't stop there. Mindful breathing has some serious benefits for your body and mind. It can lower your stress levels, reduce anxiety, and even help with things like high blood pressure. When you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious, taking a few mindful breaths can help you calm down and think more clearly. It's like hitting a reset button for your mind and body. And here's the best part. You can do this anywhere, anytime. Stuck in traffic? Take some mindful breaths. Feeling stressed at work? Sneak in a few minutes of breathing practice. Having trouble sleeping? Focusing on your breath can help quiet your mind and relax your body. The more you practice mindful breathing, the more natural it becomes. 
you might find yourself automatically taking deeper, more conscious breaths when you're faced with challenging situations. It's like building a superpower that you can use whenever you need it. So give it a try right now. Take a deep breath in and slowly let it out. Feel the difference? That's the power of mindful breathing, and it's always available to you, no matter where you are or what's going on in your life. This simple practice can be your first step towards a more peaceful, centered, and aware way of living. Now, let's talk about something that might sound simple, but has the power to completely shift your perspective, gratitude. We're not talking about the kind of thank you notes your parents made you write as a kid. This is about cultivating a deep sense of appreciation for the good things in your life, no matter how small they might seem. So how do you practice gratitude? It's easier than you might think. Start by setting aside a few minutes each day to think about three things you're grateful for. These can be big things, like your health or your family, or small things like a delicious cup of coffee or a beautiful sunset. The key is to really feel the gratitude, not just list things off. You can do this first thing in the morning to set a positive tone for your day, or at night to reflect on the good things that happened. Some people like to write their gratitudes down in a journal, while others prefer to just think about them. There's no right or wrong way. Do what feels best for you. Now, you might be wondering, how can just thinking about good things change my life? Well, the effects of gratitude are pretty amazing. When you focus on what you're thankful for, you're training your brain to notice the positive things in your life. It's like you're putting on glasses that help you see all the good stuff that's already there. This shift in focus can have a huge impact on your happiness and well-being. People who practice gratitude regularly report feeling more optimistic, more satisfied with their lives, and even sleeping better. It can improve your relationships, too. When you start noticing and appreciating the good things others do, it can strengthen your connections and make you feel more supported. But gratitude isn't just about feeling good. It can actually change how your brain works. Studies have shown that practicing gratitude can increase activity in the parts of your brain associated with positive emotions and social bonding. It's like you're rewiring your brain to be more positive and resilient. And here's something really cool. Gratitude can help you even when things aren't going well. When you're facing challenges, taking a moment to find something to be grateful for can help you cope better. It doesn't mean ignoring the problems, but it can help you keep things in perspective and find the strength to keep going. One of the best things about gratitude is that it can create a positive cycle. The more you practice it, the more you'll notice things to be grateful for. And the more you notice, the more positive you'll feel. It's like a happiness snowball that keeps growing over time. So why not give it a try right now? Take a moment to think of three things you're grateful for. They can be big or small, it doesn't matter. Just focus on them and really feel that sense of appreciation. Do you notice a shift in how you feel? That's the power of gratitude at work. Remember, gratitude isn't about ignoring the challenges in your life or pretending everything is perfect. It's about recognizing the good things even in difficult times. It's a simple practice that can have a profound impact on how you experience the world. And the best part? You can start right now, today, 
and begin to see changes in your life almost immediately. Now let's talk about a practice that might seem a bit intimidating at first, but is actually much simpler than you might think. Meditation. When you hear the word meditation, you might picture monks sitting cross-legged for hours on end. But don't worry, that's not what we're talking about here. Meditation is simply a way to quiet your mind and find a sense of inner calm, and it's something anyone can do. So how do you meditate? Here's a simple way to start. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Sit comfortably. It doesn't have to be on the floor. A chair is fine. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths to help you relax. Now just focus your attention on your breath. Notice the sensation of breathing in and out. When thoughts come up, and they will, don't worry about it. Just notice them and gently bring your attention back to your breath. Start with just five minutes a day. It might feel challenging at first, and that's okay. Your mind is used to being busy all the time, so it might take a while to settle down. But with practice, it gets easier. You can gradually increase the time as you get more comfortable with the practice. Now, you might be thinking, how can just sitting quietly change my life? Well, the benefits of meditation are pretty amazing. First of all, it's a great stress buster. When you meditate regularly, you're training your mind to be calmer and more focused. This can help you deal better with the stresses of daily life. But it goes way beyond just stress relief. Meditation can actually change your brain in positive ways. Studies have shown that regular meditation can increase the gray matter in parts of the brain associated with learning, memory, and emotional regulation. It's like you're giving your brain a workout and making it stronger and more resilient. Meditation can also help with things like anxiety and depression. By learning to observe your thoughts without getting caught up in them, you can gain more control over your emotional reactions. It's like you're creating a bit of space between you and your thoughts, which can be really helpful when dealing with difficult emotions. And here's something really cool. Meditation can help you become more self-aware. As you spend time quietly observing your mind, you start to notice patterns in your thoughts and behaviors. This increased self-awareness can help you make better decisions and respond to situations in a more thoughtful way. Meditation can also improve your relationships. When you're more centered and less reactive, you're better able to listen to others and respond with empathy. You might find that you're more patient, more understanding, and better able to handle conflicts. One of the great things about meditation is that its benefits extend beyond the time you spend actually meditating. You might notice that you're calmer and more focused throughout your day. You might find it easier to concentrate on tasks or to stay present in conversations with others. Now I know what you might be thinking. I can't meditate because I can't stop thinking. But here's the thing. The goal of meditation isn't to stop thinking. Thoughts will come, and that's okay. The practice is about noticing those thoughts and gently bringing your attention back to your breath or whatever you're focusing on. It's this process of noticing and refocusing that strengthens your mind. And don't worry if you feel like you're not good at it at first. There's no such thing as perfect meditation. Every time you sit down to meditate, you're practicing and improving, even if it doesn't feel like it. It's like exercising a muscle. The more you do it, the stronger it gets. One of the best things about meditation 
is that it's completely portable. Once you learn how to do it, you can practice anywhere, on your commute, during your lunch break, or even for a few minutes before a stressful meeting. It's like having a tool for inner peace that you can use anytime, anywhere. So why not give it a try right now? Take a minute to close your eyes and focus on your breath. Just one minute. Notice how you feel afterward. That little taste of calm and focus. That's what meditation can bring into your life and it only gets better with practice. Remember, meditation isn't about achieving some perfect state of mind. It's about showing up for yourself, taking a few moments to step back from the busyness of life and cultivating a sense of inner peace. It's a simple practice that can have profound effects on your life, helping you to feel more calm, more focused, and more in tune with yourself and the world around you. Let's move on to a practice that has the power to transform not just your own life, but the lives of those around you as well. Loving kindness meditation. Don't let the fancy name fool you. This is a simple yet profound practice that's all about cultivating compassion and goodwill towards yourself and others. So, what exactly is loving kindness meditation? At its core, it's about sending positive thoughts and wishes to yourself and others. It might sound a bit strange at first, but stick with me here. The effects can be truly life-changing. Here's how you do it. Find a comfortable place to sit and close your eyes. Start by focusing on yourself. Silently repeat phrases like, May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I live with ease. Really try to feel these wishes for yourself. It's not about forcing feelings, but about opening your heart to the possibility of these good things. Next, think of someone you care about, a friend or family member. Direct those same wishes to them. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live with ease. Then expand your circle. Think of an acquaintance, someone you don't know well. Send those wishes to them too. Finally, if you're up for it, you can even direct these wishes to someone you're having difficulties with or to all beings everywhere. Now, you might be thinking, how can just thinking nice thoughts about people change anything? Well, the effects of this practice are pretty amazing. First of all, it can significantly boost your own mood and well-being. When you practice wishing good things for yourself and others, you're training your mind to be more positive and compassionate. It's like you're rewiring your brain for kindness. But it goes beyond just feeling good. Regular practice of loving-kindness meditation can actually change how you interact with the world. You might find yourself becoming more patient with that annoying coworker, or more understanding when someone cuts you off in traffic. It's like you're building a reservoir of goodwill that you can draw from in challenging situations. This practice can also help heal difficult relationships. By wishing well for someone you're having trouble with, you're not excusing their behavior but you are opening up the possibility of seeing them in a new light. It can help reduce anger and resentment, making it easier to find constructive solutions to conflicts. And here's something really powerful. Loving-kindness meditation can help combat feelings of loneliness and increase your sense of connection to others. In our increasingly isolated world, this sense of connection is incredibly valuable. You might start to feel more in tune with the people around you, more aware of our shared hopes and struggles. One of the most beautiful things about this practice is how it can ripple out into the world. As you become more compassionate and understanding, 
you'll likely find that people respond to you differently. Your relationships might become deeper and more meaningful. You might even inspire others to be kinder and more compassionate in their own lives. Don't worry if it feels a bit awkward or forced at first. Like any skill, it takes practice. Start with just a few minutes a day, focusing mainly on yourself and those closest to you. As it becomes more natural, you can expand your circle of compassion wider and wider. Remember, loving-kindness meditation isn't about ignoring problems or pretending everything is perfect. It's about cultivating a basic attitude of goodwill that can help you navigate life's challenges with more grace and resilience. It's a simple practice that has the power to transform not just your own life, but to contribute to a kinder, more compassionate world. Now let's talk about a practice that combines the benefits of meditation with the joy of movement, mindful walking. This is perfect for those of you who find it hard to sit still or who want to bring more awareness into your daily activities. Mindful walking is exactly what it sounds like, walking with full attention and awareness. Here's how you do it. Start by standing still and becoming aware of your body. Feel the weight of your feet on the ground. Now, begin to walk slowly. Pay attention to each step. Notice how your feet feel as they touch the ground, how your legs move, how your arms swing. Feel the air on your skin and the rhythm of your breath. If your mind wanders, and it probably will, gently bring your attention back to the sensations of walking. You can practice mindful walking anywhere, in a park, around your neighborhood, or even just pacing in your living room. The key is to walk slowly enough that you can really pay attention to the experience of moving. Now you might be wondering, how can just walking slowly make a difference in my life? Well, the benefits are pretty amazing. First off, mindful walking is a great way to reduce stress and anxiety. When you're fully focused on the act of walking, it's hard to worry about the future or ruminate about the past. You're fully in the present moment, and that can be incredibly calming. But it's not just about stress relief. Mindful walking can actually improve your overall mental health. It combines the benefits of meditation, increased focus, better emotional regulation, with the mood-boosting effects of physical exercise. It's like a two-for-one deal for your mental well-being. And here's something really cool. Mindful walking can help you become more aware of your body. As you pay attention to how you move, you might notice areas of tension or discomfort that you hadn't been aware of before. This increased body awareness can help you make adjustments to improve your posture and reduce physical stress. Mindful walking can also be a great way to connect with nature. If you're able to walk outside, really notice the world around you, the trees, the sky, the sounds of birds, or the rustle of leaves. This connection with nature can be deeply refreshing and rejuvenating. One of the best things about mindful walking is that it's so easy to incorporate into your daily life. You don't need any special equipment or to set aside extra time. You can practice it on your way to work while running errands or even just walking from one room to another in your house. It's a way to turn everyday activities into opportunities for mindfulness and self-care. And don't worry if your mind wanders a lot at first. That's totally normal. The practice isn't about having a perfectly clear mind. It's about noticing when your mind has wandered and gently bringing your attention back to the experience of walking. 
each time you do this, you're strengthening your ability to stay present and focused. Mindful walking can also be a great alternative for those times when sitting meditation feels too challenging. If you're feeling restless or agitated, a mindful walk can help you settle your mind and body. It's like meditation in motion. Remember the goal isn't to get anywhere in particular or to walk for any set distance. It's about being fully present in the experience of moving. Even a few minutes of mindful walking can help you feel more grounded and centered. So why not give it a try right now? Stand up and take a few mindful steps, really paying attention to how it feels. Notice the difference in your state of mind afterward. That's the power of mindful walking, a simple practice that can bring more peace and awareness into your everyday life. Let's dive into a practice that can help you understand yourself better and gain clarity on your thoughts and feelings. Journaling. Now before you start thinking about those diaries you might have kept as a kid, let me assure you this is something different and much more powerful. Journaling, in the context of spiritual practice, is about self-reflection and self-discovery. It's a way to explore your inner world, process your experiences, and gain insights into your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And the best part? All you need is a pen and paper, or a digital device if that's more your style. So, how do you start a journaling practice? It's simple. Set aside some time each day. It could be in the morning, before bed, or any time that works for you. Find a quiet place where you won't be interrupted. Then just start writing. Don't worry about grammar, spelling, or even making sense. The goal is to let your thoughts flow freely onto the page. If you're not sure what to write about, here are some prompts to get you started. How am I feeling right now? What am I grateful for today? The question is, what's been on my mind lately? Zrenya? Or, what do I want to achieve in the near future? You can also write about your dreams, your fears, your hopes, anything that feels important to you. Now, you might be thinking, how can just writing down my thoughts change my life? Well, the benefits of journaling are pretty amazing. First off, it's a great way to reduce stress and anxiety. When you write down your worries and fears, it's like you're taking them out of your head and putting them somewhere else. This can help you feel lighter and more in control. But it goes beyond just stress relief. Journaling can help you understand yourself better. As you write, you might start to notice patterns in your thoughts and behaviors. You might gain insights into why you react certain ways in certain situations. This self-awareness is incredibly valuable. It's the first step towards making positive changes in your life. Journaling can also help you solve problems. When you're facing a difficult decision or situation, writing about it can help you see things more clearly. It's like you're having a conversation with yourself, exploring different perspectives and options. You might be surprised at the solutions you come up with when you give yourself the space to think things through on paper. And here's something really powerful. Journaling can help you process and heal from difficult experiences. Writing about traumatic or upsetting events can help you make sense of them and reduce their emotional impact over time. It's like you're telling your own story, which can be incredibly empowering. Journaling can also boost your creativity. When you make a habit of writing regularly, you're exercising your creative muscles. You might find yourself coming up with new ideas or seeing things from fresh perspectives. 
many writers and artists use journaling as a way to spark their creativity and work through creative blocks. One of the great things about journaling is that it's completely private. You don't have to show your writing to anyone else unless you want to. This means you can be completely honest with yourself, exploring thoughts and feelings that you might not feel comfortable expressing out loud. Don't worry if you're not a good writer or if you don't know what to say at first. The goal isn't to create a masterpiece. It's to explore your inner world. Start with just a few minutes a day. Write whatever comes to mind, even if it's just, I don't know what to write. Over time, it will become easier and more natural. And remember, there's no right or wrong way to journal. Some people like to write long, detailed entries. Others prefer bullet points or short notes. Some people use prompts or specific techniques, while others just write freely. Find what works for you. Journaling can be especially helpful during times of change or uncertainty. It can help you track your progress towards goals, work through difficult emotions, or simply make sense of your experiences. It's like having a conversation with your wisest self. So why not give it a try right now? Grab a pen and paper, or open a new document on your device, and write for just five minutes about how you're feeling in this moment. Don't judge or edit. Just let the words flow. You might be surprised at what comes out. Remember, journaling is a practice, not a performance. It's about the process, not the product. Each time you sit down to write, you're giving yourself the gift of self-reflection and self-discovery. It's a simple practice that can lead to profound insights and positive changes in your life. Let's talk about a practice that can transform something you do every day into a powerful spiritual experience, mindful eating. Now you might be thinking, what's spiritual about eating? But stick with me here, because this simple practice can change not just your relationship with food, but your whole approach to life. Mindful eating is all about paying full attention to the experience of eating and drinking. It's about savoring every bite, noticing the flavors, textures, and sensations of your food. But it goes beyond just enjoying your meal more. It's about developing a deeper awareness of your body's needs and your relationship with food. So how do you practice mindful eating? Start by sitting down to eat without any distractions, no TV, no phone, no book. Take a moment to look at your food. Notice the colors, the shapes, the aroma. Take a small bite and chew slowly, really focusing on the taste and texture. Notice how it feels as you swallow. Pay attention to your body's signals of hunger and fullness. Now you might be wondering, how can eating slowly change my life? Well, the benefits are pretty amazing. First off, mindful eating can help you enjoy your food more. When you're really paying attention, you might notice flavors and textures you've never noticed before. It's like you're tasting your food for the first time. But it goes way beyond just enjoying your meals more. Mindful eating can help you develop a healthier relationship with food. By paying attention to your body's signals, you might start to recognize the difference between physical hunger and emotional eating. This can lead to better food choices and a more balanced approach to nutrition. Mindful eating can also help with weight management. When you eat slowly and pay attention, you're more likely to notice when you're full which can prevent overeating. Plus, when you're really savoring your food, you might find that you're satisfied with smaller portions. But the benefits of mindful eating extend beyond just your physical health. 
This practice can help reduce stress and anxiety. Taking the time to focus fully on your meal can be a form of meditation, giving your mind a break from worries and distractions. It's like a mini retreat in the middle of your day. Mindful eating can also help you develop gratitude. As you pay attention to your food, you might start to think about where it came from, the farmers who grew it, the people who transported and prepared it. This can lead to a deeper appreciation for the interconnectedness of all things. And here's something really powerful. Mindful eating can help you become more present in other areas of your life. As you practice being fully present during meals, you might find that it becomes easier to stay present in conversations, at work, or in other daily activities. Don't worry if it feels awkward or challenging at first. Like any new habit, it takes time to develop. Start with just one mindful bite at each meal. Gradually increase until you can eat an entire meal mindfully. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about bringing more awareness into your daily life. Now, let's explore a practice that can help you tap into the profound wisdom and healing power of the natural world, connecting with nature. In our modern tech-driven world, it's easy to forget that we're part of nature, not separate from it. But reconnecting with the natural world can be a deeply spiritual and transformative experience. So what does it mean to connect with nature? It's about more than just being outside. It's about really engaging with the natural world using all your senses. It's about slowing down, observing, and opening yourself up to the wonder and beauty around you. Here's how you can practice nature connection. Find a natural space. It could be a park, a forest, a beach, or even your backyard. Spend some time there without any distractions. Use all your senses. Look closely at the plants and animals around you. Listen to the sounds of birds, insects, or the wind in the trees. Feel the earth beneath your feet, the sun or breeze on your skin. Smell the flowers or the earthy scent of soil. If it's safe, you might even taste wild berries or herbs. Now you might be thinking, how can just being outside change my life? Well, the effects of connecting with nature are pretty amazing. First off, it's a great stress buster. Studies have shown that spending time in nature can lower cortisol levels, that's the stress hormone, and reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression. It's like nature has a calming effect on our nervous system. But it goes beyond just stress relief. Connecting with nature can actually boost your physical health. It can lower blood pressure, improve immune function, and even speed up recovery from illness or surgery. It's like nature has a healing effect on our whole body. And here's something really powerful. Nature connection can help you gain perspective on your life. When you're surrounded by the vastness of nature, whether it's a starry sky, a mountain range, or an ocean, your personal problems often start to seem smaller. It can help you see the bigger picture and connect with something larger than yourself. Nature connection can also spark creativity and problem-solving skills. Many great thinkers and artists throughout history have found inspiration in nature. You might find that after spending time outdoors, you have new ideas or see things from a fresh perspective. One of the most beautiful things about connecting with nature is how it can deepen your sense of interconnectedness with all life. As you observe the intricate web of relationships in an ecosystem, you might start to see how you, too, are part of this web. This can lead to a greater sense of responsibility 
towards the environment and all living beings. Don't worry if you live in a city or don't have easy access to wild spaces. You can practice nature connection even with a houseplant by watching clouds from your window or by visiting a local park. The key is to approach it with curiosity and openness, really paying attention to the natural world around you. Let's talk about a practice that can not only change your life, but also make a real difference in the world, service to others. Now, you might be thinking, how is helping others a spiritual practice? But stick with me, because this simple act of giving can be one of the most powerful ways to grow spiritually and find deeper meaning in life. Service to others is about extending yourself to help someone else without expecting anything in return. It could be something as simple as helping a neighbor carry their groceries, volunteering at a local charity, or even just offering a listening ear to a friend in need. The key is that it comes from a place of genuine care and compassion. So how do you practice service? Start by looking around you. Who in your life or community could use some help? It doesn't have to be something big. Small acts of kindness can make a big difference. Maybe you could offer to babysit for a stressed out parent, help an elderly neighbor with yard work, or donate some time to a cause you care about. Now, you might be wondering, how can helping others change my life? Well, the effects of service are pretty amazing. First off, it can significantly boost your mood and overall sense of well-being. When you help others, your brain releases feel-good chemicals like oxytocin and serotonin. It's like you get a natural high from being kind, but it goes way beyond just feeling good. Practicing service can give you a sense of purpose and meaning. When you're focused on helping others, your own problems often seem less overwhelming. It can help put things in perspective and remind you of what's really important in life. Service can also help combat feelings of loneliness and isolation. When you reach out to help others, you're creating connections. You might meet new people, strengthen existing relationships, or simply feel more connected to your community. This sense of connection is incredibly valuable for our mental and emotional well-being. And here's something really powerful. Serving others can help you grow as a person. It can teach you empathy, patience, and humility. It can challenge you to step out of your comfort zone and develop new skills. You might discover strengths you didn't know you had. Service can also be a great antidote to negative emotions like anger, resentment, or self-pity. When you're focused on helping others, it's hard to stay stuck in negative thought patterns. It's like service shifts your focus from your own problems to the needs of others, and in doing so, helps you find solutions to your own challenges. One of the most beautiful things about service is how it can create a ripple effect of kindness. When you help someone, they're more likely to help others in turn. In this way, your single act of kindness can spread far beyond what you can see. Don't worry if you're not sure where to start or if you feel like you don't have much to offer. Everyone has something to give, whether it's time, skills, or simply a kind word. Start small and do what feels manageable for you. The key is to approach it with an open heart and a willingness to connect with others. Remember, service isn't about being a martyr or burning yourself out. It's about finding a balance between taking care of yourself and helping others. In fact, serving others can be a form of self-care as it nourishes your spirit and gives you a sense of purpose. 
Let's explore a practice that has the power to liberate you from emotional burdens and open your heart to greater peace and joy. Forgiveness. Now, you might be thinking, forgiveness? That's easier said than done. And you're right, forgiveness can be challenging. But it's also one of the most transformative spiritual practices you can undertake. Forgiveness is about letting go of resentment, anger, or the desire for revenge towards someone who has hurt you. It's not about condoning what happened or forgetting about it. It's about freeing yourself from the emotional pain and allowing yourself to move forward. So, how do you practice forgiveness? Start by acknowledging your hurt feelings. It's okay to feel angry or hurt. Those feelings are valid. Then, try to see the situation from the other person's perspective. This doesn't mean excusing their behavior, but it can help you understand it. Next, make a conscious decision to let go of your resentment. This might involve repeating a phrase like, I choose to release my anger and forgive. Now, you might be wondering, how can forgiving someone who hurt me change my life? Well, the effects of forgiveness are pretty amazing. First off, it can significantly reduce stress and improve your mental health. Holding on to anger and resentment is like carrying around a heavy weight. When you forgive, you're putting down that weight and freeing yourself. But it goes beyond just stress relief. Forgiveness can actually improve your physical health. Studies have shown that people who practice forgiveness have lower blood pressure, a stronger immune system, and even live longer. It's like forgiveness has a healing effect on your whole body. And here's something really powerful. Forgiveness can transform your relationships. When you let go of old hurts, you create space for new, positive experiences. You might find that your relationships become deeper and more authentic. Even if you don't reconcile with the person who hurt you, forgiveness can help you approach all your relationships with more openness and compassion. Forgiveness can also boost your self-esteem and sense of personal power. When you forgive, you're choosing how you want to feel and respond, rather than letting someone else's actions control you. This can be incredibly empowering. One of the most beautiful things about forgiveness is how it can open your heart to more love and compassion. As you practice forgiving others, you might find it easier to forgive yourself for your own mistakes. This self-forgiveness is crucial for personal growth and happiness. Don't worry if forgiveness feels impossible at first. It's a process, and it takes time. Start with small things, and work your way up to bigger hurts. Remember, forgiveness is something you do for yourself, not for the other person. It's about your healing and your peace of mind. And remember, forgiveness doesn't mean you have to keep toxic people in your life or put yourself in harmful situations. You can forgive someone and still choose to maintain healthy boundaries. The goal is to free yourself from the emotional burden, not to expose yourself to further hurt. As we wrap up our exploration of these 10 powerful spiritual practices, it's important to remember that spiritual growth is a journey, not a destination. Each of these practices, from mindful breathing to forgiveness, offers a unique path to greater self-awareness, peace, and connection. The beauty of these practices is that they're accessible to everyone, regardless of your background or beliefs. You don't need any special equipment or years of training. You can start right where you are with what you have in this very moment. Remember, it's not about perfection, it's about progress.
Start small, be patient with yourself, and allow these practices to unfold naturally in your life. You might want to start with just one or two that resonate with you the most and gradually incorporate others over time. As you integrate these practices into your daily life, you may start to notice subtle shifts. Perhaps you'll feel calmer in stressful situations, more connected to those around you, or more in tune with your own thoughts and feelings. You might find yourself approaching life's challenges with greater resilience and wisdom. But the real magic happens when these practices become more than just things you do. They become a way of being. When mindfulness, gratitude, compassion, and forgiveness become your natural responses to life, you'll find that you're not just changing your own life, but positively impacting the world around you. Remember, spiritual growth is a personal journey. What works for one person might not work for another. Feel free to adapt these practices to suit your own needs and lifestyle. The key is to approach them with an open heart and a willingness to grow. As you move forward on your spiritual journey, be kind to yourself. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small it might seem. Every step forward is a victory. Every moment of awareness is growth. Finally, know that by embarking on this journey of spiritual growth, you're not just changing your own life. You're contributing to the healing and transformation of our world. As you become more peaceful, more compassionate, more aware, you radiate that energy to everyone around you. In this way, your personal spiritual practice becomes a gift to the world. So, are you ready to start this transformative journey? Remember, the power to change your life is always within you waiting to be awakened. These 10 spiritual practices are the keys to unlocking that power. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Why not take that step today?